Living with dyslexia, I've had to rely on people for a lot of things. And as a woman of color, I've had limitations placed on me. This is one place I can be myself. I've found my freedom in trouble. back and uh, before we went on that short break Jeffrey said well, we're going to the third mainland bridge but before we go to the third mainland bridge let's talk about a woman an amazing someone who has achieved a great fit Melumi Nubi we told you earlier we're going to have her on the show and she's live here yes. Yes. Thank we have to I wish I brought of champagne ah, to just pop exactly. for you. Like and we pop did it today. It's too early in the morning. Oh, no. It's too early. She it's five o'clock somewhere else. She deserves <laughs> it. But Bellumi Nube is a Nigerian travel and lifestyle content creator with a remarkable global footprint, having explored over 80 countries. And now she is currently, well, she has embarked on the solo road trip from London to Lagos. She started this January 30th. But I'd like to ask first, how did you even come about this? What inspired this? This decision did you just wake up one morning and say oh I'm gonna I want do to it. do this <laughs> um, it's a mixture of both honestly like you said I've been a world traveler I've traveled so many places explored so many culture and each time I was traveling it was mostly like you know to Europe to Asia but my own continent I barely had any footprint there so I was like I want to explore more of this place I was born into so I was born in Lagos Nigeria I grew up in the UK and each time I came home I just kind of flew that six hours you know you leave the cold and then you come to the one place but then there was just this West African region I haven't actually fully immersed myself in and I wanted to so I started googling overland overland travel and I just did not see people that looked like me there was no explorers in terms of like just being showcased in the media and I was like this needs to be changed in terms of we do travels why is our story not being told why is the African nation in terms of tourism not being explored in terms of, like showcased more in a more positive light at least um, so it was just a combination of things it was connecting my two homes it was inspiring like you know black travelers that you can do audacious things you can step out of your comfort zone and obviously that must have transitioned out of travel to you know every other thing like daily their daily lives um so yeah i just wanted to do something audacious i'm i'm crazy as a lot of people like to say mm -hmm. <laughs> and just you know enjoy traveling and showcasing the you world you know i was people. expecting to see like black eye you know <laughs> bags under the eye just tiredness and you're here looking super gorgeous thank you so you're you? out that trip i mean it took you how many months oh. so the whole trip was about more than 60 60 days i think some counted to 68 days um oh, wow. so two months on the road um i tried to maintain the look you know <laughs> it's a signature look look nice. um but yeah and once you rest you know you get some good night rest you kind of reset for the next day but it was tedious the time on the road I was you know you had his eyes and lows but i'm so i'm so grateful for the adventure 
You know, I just had to check on the map. Uh -huh. Logged on to Lagos. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm looking at it now. You are. So you, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the map says, um, uh, is it four days and two hours mm -hmm. by road? But obviously, it's not a counting. Well, all it depends of the... on what routes. But right exactly. now, it's so that it's taking you straight down. Exactly. So let's okay. walk through the route. Because a lot of people are asking. Uh -huh. On the one hand, a lot of people are asking so they can replicate it. <laughs> Just make sure you have the right documentation. Exactly. <laughs> so, so walk us through what your route was like. So, um, yeah. Started in the UK. Yeah. I know some people see a body of water and immediately exactly. they panic. They're like, oh my God, you know, there's a ferry. You put the yes. car into the ferry and take it to the other side. It's usually about an hour, an hour and a half. And then you get out of the other side and continue the journey. So that's what I had to do. Oh. So I had to cross the English Channel into France, made my way down through Spain. When you get to Spain, you want to get into the African continent through Morocco, you take another ferry. So from Tarifa is where I took the ferry, crossed into, and just kept making my way through the coastal region. So I used the coast, I stayed to the right. West Africa. So you can go down north, you can drill to the east, but the, so the, cho the, the choice was, instead. yes, exactly, the choice Brilliant. I made was that. So, um, <laughs> You can thank us for this. We're we'll, we'll giving you an insight. Exactly. For the Expo. Expo, right? But they have your visa, by the way. Exactly, which is something you mentioned. So maybe talk us through mm -hmm. um, how you had to go through each of those countries. Uh -huh. um, what what they requested in for, for documentation. <laughs> Again, this is I'm not. We're not trying to give you Expo, but just to take you through our experience. So just okay. walk us through that experience. So I am a very very privileged in terms of I have dual citizen. So I'm Brit British and Nigerian. So that gave me you know extra Expo in terms of like ease of passage. Mm. So from to Europe all the way to the Gambia, it was visa free. So I was just kind of presenting my docu documentation, my passport, presenting the car ownership. So it's the V52 from the UK that I own the vehicle, my insurance of the vehicle and all of that. I think that's the, literally the three main things I needed. Um, and yeah, that got me through. And then once I got to Guinea-Bissau, I transitioned passports. So I could start using my ECOWAS to go through all this. Course. So I actually did not have to pay for any visas, which is an amazing, you know, cost saving um, thanks to that. But yeah, so that's how I just navigated those two so things. I, 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 we could see the, but before I ask, uh -huh. you're going to talk about that incident, that accident that we're all alarmed for what oh, yeah. happened there. But in addition to responding to what happened with the accident, uh, how did you convince your father, <laughs> the professor, <laughs> that I want to do this? And what did you do for him to agree? Or your mom in this My case? My mom, which is was, in the building actually. Which, Shout out to her. He's <laughs> a father of mom. You know, fathers and daughters. They have, yeah. it's, it's, <laughs> it's a um, number one is kind of having a history or track record of traveling. So like I said, this is not my first thing. It was meticulously planned. It took a year of planning. So just showing that level. is a very logical thinker, my dad. So showing that kind of level of preparation, not a spontaneous, oh, I'm just going to do this. I think gave me a bit of peace. It definitely worried as any father or mother would, but there was just kind of like, she's done this before. I've traveled to Namibia, 4,000 kilometers solo drive, me and the car, wild camping, you know, things like that. I've done London to Lake Como in Italy. I've done Lagos to Ghana twice by road. So those, those previous experience, I think travel is like training a muscle. The more you do it, the more experience you have, you get this kind of experience on the road. So showing those, those kind of like, and doing those successfully and making it back home, I think it just gave them that relief that, okay, Okay, this is bigger, this is grander, this is a lot more daring. You are stressed this <laughs> I am. <laughs> you are stressed. Typical Nigerian parents. Oh my God, you are stressed. totally. Trust me, you are stressed. <laughs> well, let's talk about the challenges okay, so that you, you had. To go. To. That was when... That was in Togo, yes. Yeah. That was in the fetish market in Togo. I love just culture immersing myself in places I go to. It's not just a drive. It's really seeing the place and exploring mm -hmm. it, trying the local cuisine, and really showcasing the place I, I go to. Because travel is more than just, you know, being on the roads. It's to really have a better understanding of the place you are. I had a good time. Like, this trip was amazing. Um, <laughs> this was in Mojo, and it was just a beautiful place. Um, yeah, this, exactly. This is what tourism is about. It's about pushing tourism. I'm, yeah. And I'm so delighted to be able to do that here in Lagos, Nigeria. Yeah, so many yeah. people that will not put their legs out there. Oh, yeah, <laughs> honestly. Everyone's like, careful, it's deep. I'm like, but it's ah, life is now. about it's it's me. Me now. <laughs> So tell us about that in that accident. Yeah. Um, so that happened in Ivory Coast, Cote d'Ivoire. Um, I well, where we lost the finals, man. <laughs> well, exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I mm -hmm. feel like you should have just avoided mm -hmm. it. <laughs> accident on Sally, the yes, it was an Ooh. impact on tr on a truck. So it started from the border. So this is not a one-off occasion in terms of or an isolated occasion. It's a bigger picture, which I definitely want to like expand on a bit more. Mm -hmm. So I crossed the border um, in Ivory Coast at 10 a.m. I wasn't allowed to actually leave the border post till 7 p.m. 
just back and forth, bribery, wanting me to pay for documentation I did not need or need to pay to for. Ten to seven. Ten to seven. And this is not the first time I've been delayed for such a prolonged amount. We know Liberia was there for two nights. You know, just back and forth on documentations and just like traveling within Africa in terms of the freedom that we say we have is not necessarily there. So that needs to be worked on. Um, so yeah, and I looked around, I didn't feel safe. I haven't researched this particular area because I had plans. I'll cross the border and I'll drive to a certain place. I've researched. Remember, I'm doing this solo, so yeah. I couldn't just be spontaneous in things like my safety. Um, so I was like, okay, let me just drive to where I was going to. It was a fairly easy drive, you know, but it was dark. And there was a packed drop truck with no one inside, no hazard in one. Exactly. Normally, even if they don't have the red triangle, Ooh, they put like leaves or something, something. just to warn you that there's a standing no truck and it's no reflectors, nothing. nothing. And it was pitch black. So just on, it happened so quickly. Like I was driving one moment and suddenly I was on imp I impacted it. So that was the crash that happened. Whoa. And yeah, so I, the car kind of like was going and then turned. Um, um, when the impact happened, the on kept on going. So the whole neighborhood or the community woke up. They came with flashlights. They tried to open the, the passenger seat and my, my seat and the driver's seat, and it was stuck. So we had to, I literally had to crawl. So thank God I was not hurt. I was mm. bruised, but not like broken bones or anything like that. I was in the hospital for two days. Um, and they wanted me to press charges on the truck driver. And I was like, it was at the wrong, but this is a ripple effect of the border. I shouldn't have been on the road at that time anyways. Mm. So that's why, you know, these people just, oh, we're just delaying her to get money, but they're actually costing life. And this is not the first, this is not the second time it happened to on my travels. Mm -hmm. So I think definitely policy change in terms of who is regulating these borders, what are they doing, how are we keeping them in check, are they just free liberating to make up laws, you know, when it's not. I had all the, this took a year of planning, I had yeah. all the right documentation. It was just a case of, we could intimidate her, she's a woman, you know, all of that stuff. Which brings me to my next question. I mean, I followed your trip mm -hmm. and some places Places, especially in Africa, you had challenges, you slept a while, you took mm -hmm. a while at the borders. Mm -hmm. Which brings me to, do we really need new policies in terms of relationship in the African continent? Because I know coming from where you were coming from, you had no problem, almost no problem, well, no challenges. Mm -hmm. But when you got to Africa, traveling within Africa, I mean, I've traveled within Africa, mm -hmm. sometimes it's even more difficult than traveling out of Africa. What do you need government or governments across African countries need to do? I think definitely just not written policy, but actually it being implemented in terms of, you know, this freedom, this echo was we're speaking about, for example, why am I still paying for a stamp just for you to stamp my passport? You know, we fact checking these people, you know, who are actually calling them to to check if something goes wrong. If, and listening to, to travelers like myself, you know, when government officials are traveling, they have the privilege of having, you know, their official vehicles and stuff like that. So they do not see the everyday man travelers. So when bloggers and travel content creators and things are out there saying, look, this is tough. We need to do something. About it. And you're right. It does affect trade. It does affect, you know, tourism. Yes. Yeah, if this is what people are saying, they don't want to come to that mm -hmm. kind of country. So it's very, very much need to be dealt with in terms of rotation of the officers so they don't feel comfortable in the mm -hmm. post they are. You know, just really making sure that they know that, you know, bribery will be, will be dealt with, yes. you know, with high punishment or something like that, you know. But there's no level of accountability so everybody just kind of do what they want to do mm. well I, I think the other question and, and this is a big topic and I'm I'm hoping that you'll be on that table so mm -hmm. you can speak about your experience because yeah. sometimes policies are made just you know just theories yes but when you have people who've experienced it can give you details Correct. then it will be important in formulating policies but your car was uh, was wrecked big time mm -hmm. but your car yeah. came back <laughs> that was, that was whole. A miracle. so how did you was what happened did you, did you just use the balumi superpower like, and just <laughs> the car and just, how did you fix the car because we saw your car broke down because we saw the again. same car coming yeah. Yeah, 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 so yeah. how did you do it so, what um, you so when the, the accident happened there was definitely lots of discussion of you know rental cars alternative car but my name is Lumi so it was actually named by the community member Ooh. so there's been a long standing bond between me and her in terms sorry of, say that again her name is Lumi whose name is Lumi Who's the, the, name name is, the car name is Lumi. The car name is Lumi. <laughs> the car is a pet. Oluwa Lumi, actually. So it's like God in okay, the so we're not naming cars. We're naming cars because okay. she's it's part of the journey. 
through a lot. Um, she's gone through a lot. She was sick of me at that point. Like this, <laughs> this was almost entering Ghana. She's like, I'm, I'm sorry, it's going to Togo. And she's like, I'm done. Like I'm gonna just stop working. Um, but we got her back to life. But yeah, in terms of the vehicle, so when after the accident, we told her to Abidjan, um, where the mechanics were absolutely fantastic. Shout out to the Nigerian Embassy in Cote d'Ivoire. They were amazing in you know just assisting, but after my accident and just finding a mechanic and just helping me in that situation. So do seek out if you're doing trips like this. It wasn't something I always connected embassies to kind of like visas. Yeah. There's a broader aspect, you know, it's representation, protection. it's protection. Just even just calling them so like, hey, do I'm that shout be... out again. So when shout we shout out to you, no, know, I'm massive <laughs> shout out, you know. <laughs> but when you do wrong, we come for them. So when exactly, you do right, we yeah. need to give them the credit. Like they really pulled it through, you know. Very very ambassadors, like people that are, you know doing what they're meant to do in terms of their roles and going beyond what they're meant to do. So I'm really grateful. They really stepped in in difficult time at Liberia, in Cote d'Ivoire. Um, so yeah, we talked to the mechanic and they were hands on. They were like 10 men working on it, beating and... Working on her. Working on her. her. Yeah, you know. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, honestly, so they, they brought her back to life. She's still, you know, mm. not the same, but she's been through a lot. So we'll give her the credit. Okay, so <laughs> while we're giving out expos, I mean, we're telling people, oh, you can do this, you can do this. Yes. I'm sure you must have spent a lot for this trip so that when Absolutely. people are planning <laughs> if you're planning you do, do you have money for uh, it so first of all shout out to my official sponsor um osprey their backpack company amazing in terms of your traveling and things like that so they came on board earlier on and that's why you see their logo on logo my car called osprey okay. um so they were good in terms of cost i was looking at the higher end of twenty thousand pounds for the whole trip it could wow. be more okay. you know i have to sit down and actually look at the excel sheet so it's not cheap but again i traveled through 16 different countries so if you do the cost breakdown it's like a thousand plus for each country or something like that so you fair know enough. exactly What's so fair? yeah yes. exactly so I'll need to sit down probably maybe more but it's around that price <laughs> everybody says it's fair it's fair <laughs> 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 you know, thank God our exchange rate, our Naira is rebounding at coming back. But, so looking at you 40 know, depends, <laughs> on the, <laughs> depends on where he wakes up from. So when yeah. I heard that amount, I'm like, okay. For Jeffrey that does the BS for Very expensive. Uh, <laughs> so, 20,000 pounds, really. No, I'm not saying, no, <laughs> Niger, because young people would like to do this. But Absolutely. when they hear the amount, uh, they may just not like it anymore. So <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, could fund that's what I'm saying. Yeah, all like so sponsorship is a great way, but mm. personal, you know, it's one year of, of savings from when I knew I was going to do it, you know, personal funds okay. went into it as well. But yeah, definitely it's not a cheap, okay. a cheap, travel is not cheap. I don't know why people, <laughs> <It's never laughs> like, all habits I could get into, I just travel. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let, let's talk about some of the things that we couldn't catch on the camera Absolutely. or that you didn't record that you would like us to know. To, you're a, you, you drove alone, right? Alone. Like you don't have a security. Let's put that on record there was no security guy no no, no chef, cameraman no cameraman no chef nothing just no logistic person it was Lumi, just me myself, myself and, and god and and uh, and Lumi. And Lumi. And Lumi and Lumi. exactly Lumi. on the road so talk us through the night hours especially mm -hmm. where you know even when you're driving in regular nigerian road or any other african road yes. you, you're concerned about your safety absolutely you know so talk us through how you were able to navigate that or you're just you don't care i do care because you know <laughs> i do want to stay safe um so the journey about took about more than ten thousand kilometers plus i tried to avoid like nighttime driving it was in this rare occasion that's almost forced to so i could count in my hands how many times i actually drove at night was it that i was almost getting there i was like let me just one hour extra past sunset or something but most of my driving happened during the day okay. um i had the air tag on me at one point so my family couldn't exactly my pinpoint location oh, yeah. in case of anything oh, yeah. you know when I was driving, my window was always up and my door was always locked. So nobody, even if I'm on stationary traffic, no one could just pull up on me and open the door and grab something or something like that. So just being security conscious and being quite alert and very aware of my surrounding and just not, you know, trusting people too much. Sometimes I've had to lie, like, I'm not, not, I'm not alone. Or my partner is down there. Or my <laughs> friends are in the pool. Like, just so that, you but know. But it wasn't a lie. You were not alone. You had 200 million. I had yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some were praying. Oh, heavy prayer. So you were not alone. It wasn't a so lie. Exactly. You were not alone. 
yeah. <laughs> white lie. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, those definitely communities and it's very important. I'll shout out to them. Like I started this journey, I said twelve thousand you know followers on Instagram, two hundred on TikTok, um, and we grew up to you know two hundred thousand on Instagram wow. and more almost a hundred thousand on TikTok. So that's just two those two platforms. We have YouTube, we have Facebook. So honestly, the community has really stood up from mm -hmm. and I love the how it, the, this travel has really caught it's not just young Nigerians, it's not just old, it's not just white, it's not just mm -hmm. Asian, it's like mixed and it's just so beautiful to see people coming along and understanding that it's more than just Balumi is doing this trip yeah. but showing that the impossible can be done. I it's, need to ask yeah. um, two, two quick questions. Is there a GWR in the mix here, a Guinness World Record or a record in the mix here? I did not actually look into that, you know, because it just wasn't about the record. The records are great, yeah. don't get me wrong. I love recognition and stuff, but this vision was so much bigger than that. that. Um, but if you were going to do this, it's they, it would be the first female, but um, Guinness World Record doesn't actually defray by sex yeah. because they want it to be, be be able to be broken by anybody. Yeah. Um, but there's probably something there. I probably just need to look well, into on it. Well, on behalf of the, the morning brief, we're giving, <laughs> we're giving you a record. You a record. Sure. But there's this you. user, user rather, that okay. says, and this is King Kudus on X. By the way, there's lots of funny comments about your trip on it. <laughs> so this person said, she, she, they go back by road. <laughs> I beg, I don't book her front seat. <laughs> now me first talk, so <laughs> for those who want to go back. I have a reservation for my boot space. I have someone say, I will even hang on the top of the roof. Honestly, the, the support has been so immersed and, and no, I wouldn't be driving backwards. Um, this potential plan of Lumi being in a museum here in Lagos, um, I think I, yeah. you want to return nice. to me? No, she, she'll, she'll be, be, she'll be here. Be <laughs> Did you bring Lumi, by the way? Richie? I yeah. didn't. Um, she's at the University of Lagos, still having a prime <laughs> the spot. She's resting. She needs to rest. Yeah, she needs to rest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bellamy. So you co-founded uh, the Black Explorer. I How did. will this journey um, impact that uh, organization you co-founded and what are you hoping to achieve going forward? So our last issue for the Black Explorer is Africa is not a country because it was quite disappointing people going to Africa and they just say I'm going to Africa it's like where it's 52 it's 54 countries like what what part of it you know when people going to Europe they can go to Spain or Asia or Italy you know this kind of specify so changing that narrative of what people consider to be Africa mm -hmm. is not hot it's not lions it's not these random things it's actually people going to see these diverse places so that was very very important for me. So in terms of the publication, it came to pass because it wasn't just, um, you know, we just found that black explorers, black travelers, our stories were not being promoted or showcased. And that's what I wanted to do with this journey too as well, is really showcase. I remember being in Yamasukru, showing one of the, showing the biggest church in the world. I felt like, yeah, that's in Africa? I'm like, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, really just showing that, you know, our continent is what's exploring, driving people. I've seen people say, I book flights to this place because of you. Like having yeah. that authority in the field of travel has just been something I'm, I'm excited about and especially even transition that to Nigeria itself as a country and Lagos State especially. I think that would be just amazing to just get more people coming down to explore this beautiful place that we consider home. Mm. So sure. let's talk about food. Oh yes, my favorite topic. Yes, let's talk about food. <laughs> if I don't live it, by the way. This, this, I love food. This, like, oh, this, food this, this, this is one of the lamest <laughs> where I'll ask a question. I am listening. Talk about food. <laughs> let's talk about food. <laughs> talk about From your food. experience. <laughs> yes. Uh, West Africa is blessed in terms of cuisine. I'm going to say that. I've always said Nigeria has the best cuisine. I'm, I still yeah, move from yeah, that. We, the that. diversity <laughs> of our food is just 10 out of 10. Uh, yeah, people nice. might say I'm biased. I don't want to hear it. It's good food. Um, but honestly, I, I tasted some amazing food. There's just one debate, and don't, don't cancel me on these guys. But when Ghana and Nigeria are arguing mm -hmm. about jollof rice. Pick your words, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, let's, let's Sit properly. film this. Film this, get this Be well. All right. <laughs> <laughs> There's another winner. Oh, <laughs> is it a winner? We know. Is the winner? People don't tend to talk about. Okay. But it's not that. Nigeria. No, and it's, it's not, not Ghana. It's definitely not Ghana. <laughs> it's not Senegal. Jeffrey, hold on, let <laughs> Senegal. Uh -oh. Senegal. You know we about Senegal. Senegal's week. jollof is just Gambia, just Senegal. Their jollof is to die for. The way they put the fish and the vegetable, it just marry. It's just different. It's, it's. But I've I'm seen literally Gambian selling. jollof. I, I was so, in so Gambia. Maybe Aisha we should not apologize to Elijah Lai Muhammad. What he said he had the he best. He said Senegal was because the best. Because they asked him between Nigeria jollof 
and Ghana Jollof and it's says Senegal. Yes. We didn't know where Senegal is. So I have a theory. And you know uh, another uh, food critic talked about Senegal two weeks ago. People too, should and just eat it first. Just so I'm surprised him. you guys are not seeing what's happening here. Yeah. What's happening? Well, Lumi has eaten vegetables. Ah. If you're in Nigeria, you know what that Therefore. means. They, they put something in that jollof, Belumi. Because uh, this, this is the height of it. We need to investigate it. But, but it's, it's brilliant. So we have, and I think it speaks to the fact that, I mean, all of our cuisines and meals are, uh -huh. are fantastic mm -hmm. in, in, in themselves. And we need to celebrate it. Nigeria's mm -hmm. jollof is still the best. It's still amazing. Like Please it. don't get me wrong. But, I mean, mm. you could talk about some other meals that you had that, that, that got you. So, honestly, I can't remember a specific name, but in terms of just like traditional, it's very, very similar. That's yeah. one thing I found. So very rice, very heavy on the rice right. um, dish, and then stew, soup, spice. So spice. I just love the spice. Like, you know, there's one okra dish that they do, both in Ghana and in the Gambia too as well. But the Gambia, when they put more palm oil, I've never had yes. okra palm oil, and they eat it with rice, which I, I think don't Liberia do. also Liberia has. Liberia something has yes. like that. So they just so sick, but a very close similarity, which just makes sense of the connection we have as, as you know, uh, West, as exactly as West Africa I, specifically. I understand that um, uh, you're getting a lot of attention uh, and you, you'll be meeting with some big people mm. uh, in the coming days, understandably. Mm. But I was also going to ask you, um, a lot of people know what you have done. Yes. Uh, they're wondering what is next for you. You're an mm. explorer. Are you probably going to drive from here to Mars? <laughs> if that's possible, I'm sure you will try. You're thinking about it. Oh, if that's yeah, even possible. Yeah. But so, so what is what is a future for you like and what would you like to anchor this around and fight for we know that you have that zeal that energy mm -hmm. but what will they be for you moving forward um, I think it's with two different things. Um, the first being, you know, Pelumi is always going to be a traveler. She's going to continue to explore. She's going to continue to showcase different places. So that's very important for me, just so that I continue to show people that they can go and visit this place, especially a solo female traveler. Sometimes we feel limited. We feel boxed in. We feel like the limitation, especially of society. So when you even get married and have kids, it's like, oh, no, life ends. Like, you know, I, I cannot yeah. go exploring, especially when you have the desire. So just continue to showcase that. That's very, very important. Also to empower Power the chic girl, like you know, the younger generation, and that's the reason why the, the travel and the University of Lagos was almost passing on the church to the next generation to see that look, I've done this, you are the next people that will go out and explore and do these things to as well. So, being able to inspire them, being able to showcase um, those youth empowerment, I think that's very important for me. And just kind of like a point to encourage people to step out of their comfort zone. Really, my idea was that people would say London to Lagos by road was impossible, and then they've seen me do it. So I want them to reconsider the things that they consider impossible in their life and hopefully they go out and do those things. So really that's the message for them to, to be inspired and to do the brave things they've always wanted to do. Mm. So, so. Well, maybe before I go, I mean, before we end this segment, I always talk to females who have done remarkable things because there are so many girls looking up to you guys, mm. especially people who are doing something different. So what would you like to tell that little girl right now, looking at you, admiring all you have achieved and wants to be like you? My biggest advice or my longest motto standing is the magic is in the doing. You know, I could have still been ooming and ahhing in London right now and not taking that brave step, but you actually have to step forth and do it. You can plan and replan and rethink and re examine and reassess, and all those are very important, but you actually have to take action. And that is where you see it. Like, you have to face fear in the face, and on the other side of it is everything you ever wanted. So go forth and do it. You know, I don't want to take the Nike slang, mm -hmm. but like, just do it. Like, really step all forward right. and do that. All right. I just all wanted right. to. Find Thanks. out quickly how you are handling. See, everybody wants to ask. <laughs> oh, right, uh, the, the attention from because you are now. I was saying that you, yes, you, look, like so a, you look like a you look like a model, <laughs> and, and you've maintained that look. Thank you. It's like the classic look. So model. Now you have all the records in the bag. You have Lumi. There's so much about Lumi. So how are you handling all the attention from the other side of the divide? What's the other side of the divide? From men. <laughs> From the guys, let's let's just yeah. <laughs> To be honest, um, I'm open. You know, okay. um, I'm open to those kind of conversations. Nice. Um, as long as there is purpose and direction yes, to it. Yes, please. As Let them pop As long as there is a travel with you. And they have a passport. That's very important. I just I just need to chip this in uh, before we wrap up. <laughs> just chip this in. 
Maybe you forgot to ask how you grew up, how many things you broke at home, you know, just basically. <laughs> Look, you think she was stubborn? I spoke to my mom no, the other because day. Because we need to trace why, how she became what she is. In the, mm. This is a positive side. Let's look how you all started. I legit spoke to my mom the other day because I was very curious about my young, like how I grew up. Like, mm. what was young for me like? Because, you know, they say you tend to have this kind of tendency when you're young. And what she told me, she's behind me, she's smiling at me. What she told me was that, you know, I just used to wear my diapers and just walk around the house. So wow. I was a gallivanter, I think, right from young. They never really knew what I was up to or kind of like. So I think the curiosity has always been there, mm. just looking for out or just adventuring or doing my own thing. I think I've always been in a in person kind of thing. Like I've always known or have that self direction of, oh, I want to do this. And I've had amazing parents that just cheered me on. Like, honestly, I don't think I'll be where I am. If I've had limits or caps so placed on me, Professor shout out to them. Oh, yeah, right. they are the Thank you, for me, Nubi. Thank But before so we much. go, okay. so we have done the shout out All right. to your mother. Uh -huh. Now we have to stand up. Okay. And welcome your mom. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Olubukola Nubi joins oh, us this morning. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Come here, mommy. Oh, Love you. So <laughs> well, nice. Pretty's an so amazing much. woman, and we're so proud of her. I'm sure you're also very proud of her. I do. Um, sincerely, I said I don't want to say anything. But, uh, <laughs> I'm just been listening to the interview. Um, if you can remember 2004, we traveled to U um, U.S. Mm. and we're just everywhere on the street of U.S. Mm. and in. New York, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. Calafatin and all this stuff. And after a while, we started moving together, moving together, traveling together, because I like traveling too. Oh, wow. So, oh, I see where you so get that. So you got it from the tree. Yeah, so the apple doesn't pop from the tree. Yeah, so the the tree. Stay, say, oh, we need to visit um, seven wonderland mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. So we were able to do two together, and I was tired. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I back up, so he was able to continue. Yes. From there, I limited my... Oh. So you took the torch from her. Exactly. Uh, the Thank, no, you honestly, Thank, Thank, you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. We wish you the very best. Thank you. As you continue, maybe you drive to Mars, but let's know what you're doing. <laughs> I'll make sure to give you. And a shout out to your dad, Professor Timothy Newby, of course. And I do have to support. shout out to channels as a ch as a, as an organization. They were the first people that really captured the story. I just did well documentation in terms of really, you know, pushing my story for. So honestly, forever grateful for that. So thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. So this is how we end the segment with Palumi Nubi and her beautiful mother, Mrs. <laughs> Olubu Kalanubi. Of course, thank Nigerians watching out there, you can do it. Thank so let's you. get we'll into the show. We'll be right back. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>